And when the glass contractor got here this morning and walked into this bathroom, the very first thing he noticed was this amazing piece of tile. So for all you commenters out there... Hey gang, I'm Paul with Sled Pack. Welcome back to the channel. In our previous video, you saw where we set this tub. It came out super. We're really pleased with it. The owners can't wait to use it. You will notice that we haven't siliconed yet. I had actually had a special order that color out of New Orleans. It'll be here in a few days. So make sure you stay tuned for that when we silicone this area and the shower. Our goal today though, is to start painting. And we're gonna start painting the crown and then the ceiling and work our way down. So let's walk over here, Jordan, and I'll show you my setup. So I got this 3M 120 grit sandpaper at the Benjamin Moore store. It's for use on paint. It's non-loading, which, which just means it doesn't clog up. After we sand it, just so it's absolutely smooth, we're gonna vacuum it with our shop vac and then we're gonna hit it with this, a deglosser, to guarantee that we're gonna have proper adhesion. Now, you don't have to sand and degloss, but we're gonna do both just to make sure we have proper adhesion. And this is the paint we're using. Again, Benjamin Moore, Alkit, Low Luster Enamel. So why don't we hop up on that ladder and get that crown? <laughs> so let's get up on that ladder and get that crown ready. <laughs> so let's get up on that ladder and get that crown. <laughs> So let's get up on that ladder and get that crown ready for paint. If you guys are enjoying the <laughs> So why don't we grab the ladder, get up there and start prepping that crown for paint. If you guys are enjoying the content, please smash that like button for us and consider subscribing. So let's get this ladder and get that thing knocked out. All right, gang, so we have the crown completely painted. We tried to get it on in one coat. The beauty's in the prep work, and we think it looks really good standing from down here. But we're gonna see how it looks tomorrow when it's all dried. And on the topic of trim work, we wanna get these pocket doors painted, and we wanna get all of the trim around the pocket doors painted as well. We might be able to get away with giving it a nice cleaning, but we really wanna accentuate the trim in this bathroom. If we're doing everything else new, we might as well give it a fresh coat of paint, right? So the first step is to get these pocket doors completely removed from where they're sitting right now. Dad has already tackled this pocket door off camera just to see what we were up against. And now we've got a pretty good idea. We have two more remaining pocket doors, but they both have different removal methods that I think we're gonna use. We have to tackle them two different ways. So let's head in this room and look at this one because this is the easier one. So let's go in there and check it out. All right. All righty gang, we're here at this pocket door and I think everybody has been right here where I am trying to take the pocket door off for one reason or the other. And you're wondering, how am I gonna do it? All right, this is how. You just need a tool like this this is just a painter's tool. It's got this hook on it, which helps me to do what I have to do up here. A screwdriver would work. The first thing you gotta do is unhook this latch. This one's plastic. A lot of the ones I've seen are metal, but I'm gonna push it towards the pocket in the wall there. And what I have just done is unlatched this lock from the pin that's hanging the door. And don't worry, we're gonna show you a close up of that when we get this thing out of here. So let me do this one, Jordan. All right, they're both unlatched. Now I'm gonna use this hook and I'm gonna grab that trolley and push it towards the strike side of the door off of the hanger. Now, if that hanger was the other direction, you'd have to go that way. It's just something you're gonna to have to deal with and figure out on your door. But that trolley's gonna to wanna to go this way or that way. So let me hook it. Just like that. And it's okay that it came out. There's a spot at the end of the rail just for that. So let's close this door a little bit and do that back one. The weight of the door is on this towel. 
So I'm pushing it. Now I'm pushing it this way. I'm trying to get the weight off of the trolley. See how the weight's coming off right there when I do that? So let me try to hook that trolley. There we go. I'm off. Now we're going to pivot this door out of that pocket. All right. There's one, bud. That wasn't too bad. Mm -mm. It just takes a little bit of finagling practice. But let's take you into the bathroom and show you the top of this door and exactly what's going on. All right, gang, let's take a closer look at the top of this door and see exactly what was going on in the top of that crevice. So this is the hanger I was talking about. The installer will fasten this to the top of your door. And here's the trolley we were talking about. And see this bolt right here? That slides right in there. And this latch locks it in place so it won't come out. And all we're trying to do when we unlock that latch is slide that out of there. This is a solid door, it's pretty heavy. Most of them are gonna be hollow core, much lighter, much easier to deal with. So luckily for us, this one came off pretty easily. But if you're doing this yourselves, sometimes you run into clearance issues. And fortunately, this door has clearance issues. So let's check that one out. All right, on this door, we've removed both trolleys just like we did on the previous door. And if you're doing this yourselves and you've gotten this far, now you're thinking, well, I did just what Stud Pack told me to do, but the door's not coming out. Why is that? It's because this hanger is hitting the split jam. This is a split jam, right? right? This is a jam, that's a split jam. So why is it hitting it here and it didn't hit it on there? It just depends on how much the installer cut off the bottom of the door, if any. Yeah, there's no clearance right there. Now, a lot of you are gonna say, well, why didn't you just remove this door when you had the tile out? That would have been cool, right? It would have come right out. But we wanted to show you this because we think it's valuable. A lot of people run into this all the time to repair a pocket door or to paint a pocket door. So let's show you how we get this out of here. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the head casing, the casing on the top. I'm just gonna take my knife and cut through the caulk. Try not to do too much damage. All right, we saved that in one piece. Let me put that down. Now the next thing we're gonna do is remove this half of the split jam. You can see that it ends right here. There's no dado that it's sitting in, so this will come straight down, and that'll give us the clearance we need to get this door out of there. Sometimes you'll see these screwed on. Sometimes you'll see them put on with a million nails. There we go. Always being mindful, trying to save the trim. A lot of time it's finger jointed. All right, that was successful. Nice. All right, gang, we have all three pocket doors out. Two are pretty straightforward. This one was a little more complicated, but now that you understand how they're hung and how they operate, hopefully it'll make it a little easier for you to take down your pocket doors. Now, sometimes they're extremely frustrating. So if you've had some challenges of your own, hanging or installing or removing a pocket door, let us know in the comments below. We would love to read those. Our next step on these is to paint them, but unfortunately it's getting dark and windy outside. So that's gonna have to wait for tomorrow. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. So we're gonna see you then. Hey gang, it's the next day. We're outside. It's a beautiful day to spray paint. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray paint the doors. We've got four doors to paint the cabinet shelves, and one cabinet. I wanted to walk you through my setup of how I spray paint doors alone. Sometimes I don't have Jordan and I gotta do it by myself. So we're gonna walk you through that step-by-step, -step, how to paint both sides at the same time, one setup, easy. But before we do that, we have to cut off that pocket door, the one that was too tall into the toilet area. And we're gonna prep these doors, get our sprayer set up and start spraying. So let's go get that pocket door and get it cut right now.
Alrighty gang, our doors are sanded, vacuumed, and deglossed. They are ready to spray. Our sprayer's ready. So let me show you how I set these up to paint them. Uh, again, by yourself. If you're on the weekend, don't have any help. This is a great system that I came up with. I'm sure a lot of guys do it this way too. I just never seen it before. So here's what I do. That's a 32 inch wide door. So half of that is 16. I'm gonna add two and go 18 from the hinge edge. And I'm gonna show you why that's important a little later. I used to use quarter inch lag bolts for this, but I found that they would bend under the weight of the door. So I just use structural screws. And you're gonna put one right there. All right, now we're cooking with gas. All right, let's go do the other end. All right, now let's show you the next step. So now I've just moved this horse out so that the screw is sitting on the horse, see that? And I just made these from two by fours and two by sixes. And I use them just for painting doors and stuff like this. So the next step, take a third screw and we're on the heavy side. By that, I mean, see that? Since this is off center, this is the heavy side. We're just gonna put it in put it in right there here's how it works I'm gonna spray this side I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna grab that bolt I'm gonna flip the door over and paint the other side hey let's do that and I'll show you the next step <laughs> all right sorry for the background noise the backup generators in self test mode go figure well let me show you how easy it is to flip over this 70 pound door by yourself just grab that bolt. Just like that, <laughs> one finger. Now we can shoot that side and I'll show you the next step of this system. So now we got the whole door painted. So I'm gonna remove this bolt, just drop it. I've got the door steadied with a finger on the hinge. I'm gonna come grab the strike or the hole where the knob is. I'm going to spin the door over. Just like that. Now what I do, two fingers in there, one on the bolt, and I can lift the door and move it to that end so it can dry in this position, and then we're ready to spray another door. Almost always we do hollow core doors. <laughs> this one is a solid door. I put it on a scale at 70 pounds. It's a big boy. You want me to see if I can do it? I know you can. No. Nope. No? I know I can't. <laughs> You're going to have to grab that bolt, and I'll grab the other side. Okay. All right. But that's how it works with a hollow core door. You can pick it up from here and there and transport that easy. Sure. All right, so that's our system. It works great for hollow core doors. Obviously, you saw that I needed Jordan's help to move it because it weighs 70 pounds, this one right here. But a hollow core door, you can easily pick it up by yourself and move it to the end, paint another one, move it a few inches away. I've done that and I've had 10 or 12 doors stacked right here, ready to dry and ready for installation the next day. All right, so we already hear you in the comments. What's the point of spraying these doors on the flat and then rotating them like this to dry when we can just strap them accordion style together like the pros do and spray both sides all at once standing up. So I went back to my first door I ever sprayed with this machine. It came out horrible and I'm sure all you pros remember the first time you sprayed a door or a cabinet did you have any runs? Probably, right? Well, it took me a while to get used to this machine. That very first door, I had to completely sand it and do it over. And I thought, well, there's gotta be a way to spray both sides of the door at once, alone, and get a good finish. And so I came up with this system and it works great. And this system works good for multiple doors like we talked about, but if you're just doing one or two, it's great too, because you can just leave the door laying flat if you want. Brush, roll, or paint one side, spin it over like we showed, brush, roll, or paint the other side and leave it. And then you completely eliminate the risk of runs when the door is stored in that position. But we're running out of daylight. We got three more doors to paint, so let's get it done. All right, we have our four doors painted. They're drying, they look great. I called my meteorologist buddy. He gave me the all clear for rain, no rain. 
So we're gonna leave these outside to dry. There's nowhere to put them inside, and we have some sensitivity issues. This is an alkyd, so we're gonna leave them outside to dry tonight. The last thing to do before we leave is to go turn off the irrigation system. How come? How come turn off the irrigation system? Yeah. You have to live it. Hearing the sprinklers come on after you painted some doors is just an unbelievable feeling. You just have to experience yourself. <laughs> right, okay, well I hope I never do. Right, so we're gonna let these dry and we'll see you tomorrow. Alrighty gang, it is the next day. Our meteorologist friend was right. It's a beautiful day out here, about 10 degrees warmer. We are loving it. The paint has had time to dry and check out that finish, Jordan. Dang. Why don't you get some close-ups of it? It's just smooth as glass. And you can still see some of the brush strokes from the original paint job come through our spray finish. Again, we used our Graco Magnum X7 with a 311 tip, pressure almost all the way up. And we did not thin that paint, but it's something we look at. We always check the viscosity. So let's get this door inside with the rest of them. We don't want any overspray from our next project getting on this. And then we're gonna spray those four shelves and that cabinet, and that'll be the end of the spraying. Right. We can get back inside with our brush. All right, let's lift it, man. Let's do it. All right, the backyard's all cleaned up. We got our shelves and the cabinet painted. Yesterday when we were spraying, we spray painted that one piece of base. It's dry today, so let's head inside and start running base and shoot. Alrighty gang, all the base and shoe is in. It's caulked, so that'll dry overnight and we can paint tomorrow. You saw where we painted the shelves for this cabinet. We painted the cabinet that hangs in here. All these pocket doors, all that's ready to go back in. And we're gonna paint trim and start on these walls and this ceiling. That's an exciting step. We can taste the finish line. So if you like the video, be sure to smash that like button for us. Leave us a comment below, ask a question, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We really appreciate it and we will see you on the next one. Woo!